everyone, welcome back to the more YouTube channel. It's Chris back with my rant stroke thought of the day. Surprise, surprise, no one should be surprised. It's all about Sandro Tonali. Yes, the topic of Sandro Tonali is back in the mainstream media, all over social media as well. After the FA announced that he's been charged with a further 50 acts of misconduct, um, you know, the betting period between, I think it's August and and uh, October, obviously, when he was a Newcastle United player, uh, I think there's 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 alleged um, uh, accusations that he betted on games that he played in himself, which isn't particularly great in all fairness, and it does lead to a few questions about, you know, did he do this, did he do that? I've seen some videos doing the rounds of accusing him of getting a yellow card because he betted on himself getting a yellow card and all that stuff. We don't know if it's true or not, uh, but I just wanted to jump on and give my take on this. I'm, I'm quite ambivalent about this whole thing, to be honest with you. The Sandro Tonali thing, I've always stood by the, the same kind of mantra, and I'm not going to budge from it, is that yes, the lad has a problem, he has a gambling problem and he does need the support to get over his gambling problem and I'm all for that, but he did let himself down, he let his teammates down, he let his manager down and, and subsequently he let his new fan base down. So for me, I totally understand both viewpoints on this situation, but again, once again, looking on social media in particular, the fucking toilet bowl of, of morality and opinions in the world today, there's just extremities of people fucking shouting to the side down, you can't say that, you can't say this, I mean, fucking hell, just respect the fact that somebody has that particular opinion on it, and move on, you know, if you want to support Sandra Tonali and pretend that you're a, you're an amateur psychiatrist, then fucking crack on and do it, but if somebody's not very happy that a new £50 million midfielder was betting on games that he knows he shouldn't have done, and he's been suspended for 10 months about it, and that fan has to, you know, be won back in terms of Sandro Tonali's performances, then fucking so be it as well. That's the situation with this. It's one of them topical conversation points that, you know, splits the fan base right down the middle. There seems to be way more of these now than ever before. I think it's it's probably more a society thing that people have just lost the power of debate and understanding that somebody has a different opinion on something. Doesn't matter whether it's Dan Byrne at left back, Shaw Longstaff in midfield, um, Eddie Howe's tactics or Sandro Tonali's ban. You know, we seem to be always having this two tribes at war opinion in the fan base and it's fucking exhausting guys it really really is just respect the fact that other people have a take on something listen to it you don't have to agree with it you can agree or disagree and you can both part ways and and be happy with the fact that you still have your opinion there's no need to abuse people and give people shit for it you know that's what we always say on the channel anybody's welcome in the comments you know as long as it's not abuse you know then you can have your take on something we very often have people that watch our shows that have a different take on something that the other person Person does or, or me and Mark do and it, it's all nice and pleasant in the chat there's no reason to jump on each other but the likes of X in particular is fucking terrible honestly you know one way or the other just hyperbole and fucking hysteria not a coach Steve Bruce well you know um, you know one way or the other and it just it does it's exhausting you know the top and bottom of it is here he's a young lad he's moved from AC Milan to a totally different country different language different league that's hard enough in itself he's obviously got this problem that he's not seeked any help or support for you got to look at the likes of AC Milan there in that regard, I'm sorry, but if the lads had a gambling problem, why has it not been identified and addressed at AC Milan? And then that throws open the cynical, sceptical questions about that is, did Milan know about this? And did Milan know about the risks of the charges? And did they allow this deal to go through anyway? I'm sorry, but I still think that they did. You know, this ain't a tinfoil cap I'm wearing, but I still think that AC Milan knew the potential of this coming over the hill, and they still let the transfer go through anyway. I think Tenali's agent probably knew it, and the player himself potentially knew it too and that as a fan makes you entitled to say that's not right you know you might have got away with it you might have played brilliantly this season and been you know in the team of the year and up for PFA young player of the year as far as we know but that didn't happen because he did get caught and he's been banned horrendously long you know and that's cost him in his career you know it's cost his international career as well as his club career but going back to the situation of the new charges, it looks very much like the FA are just going to put this in as part of the ban that he's already serving, which ends, I think, on the 27th of August. Uh, so he should be back early on next season. So there's not going to be an extension to his ban, which is a very good thing. Now, this player, all of this shit aside, is a very, very good footballer. And with all the talk about Bruno Guimarães potentially leaving in the summer, you know, Man City, apparently Pep Guardiola was obsessed with Bruno. We need a Sandro Tonali to come back into this squad, bang at it, ready to go, ready to prove those fans wrong who have, you know, cashed out on him and said, this guy shouldn't be here, get rid of him. You know, that's what Sandro Tonali's mission is right now as a football player. 
player is to turn those opinions around. You know, and I get people saying they want to support him. I still think it's fucking weird people singing the chant of a player who's banned for 10 months. I really don't get it. You know, had it been someone like Eric Cantona or, or maybe he's even Luis Suarez who'd been at the club for a, for a while, you know, to establish themselves as a mainstay of that football club. I kind of get that from those fan bases. But tonight had only been here five minutes. Yes, he'd showed glimpses of what he could do. But I think it's weird singing the chant. But like I say, each to their own. If you want to sing it, you sing it. If you don't want to sing it, you don't fucking sing it. Everyone's entitled to their particular opinion on this situation but it's a very very volatile topical conversation piece within the fan base right now we wanted to jump on and just give you my take on it is then my take on it is that Tonali needs help definitely he's got a problem and I hope he's getting that help but he made a mistake and he has to pay for his mistake and he has to understand that when you make mistakes in life sometimes the consequences are people struggle to forgive you some people may never forgive you at all and that's a consequence of the mistake but all Tonali can do is knuckle down train hard come back into the squad after August next year and just be fucking outstanding, hopefully, in a black and white shirt and that will win fans back. But let us know what your opinions are on this whole Tonali situation. I think it's a really bad distraction, again, away from a horrible season um, where everything just seems to be going tits up. You know, I don't know what's gone on, you know, injury problems, players scrapping uh, all sorts of shit you know you can list them all off when this season ends we will definitely all unpack this as fans as content creators and just figure out what in the name of fuck happened to this season you know the league finish obviously is still something that's very very important and they're up for grabs you know the lads need to put it in in the last 10 games start with West Ham this Saturday to try and get a European position because that's massively vital for bringing in players in the summer so we'll be back to cover that as well guys thanks for watching click the like button subscribe if you can we're close to 7,000 subs. Have a cracking day wherever you are and we'll see you later. Cheers. Hey.